How great a tale there could be that in God's hands had a place for me, that on a sinner's lips like mine, the word of God is shared and believed. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <coughs> Father of the house, uncle of the house, PPC executives and members, religious brothers and sisters in Christ, friends and loved ones of our candidates to be confirmed. Once again, I bring you peace and joy from the Lord. Permit me to share a few thoughts with you, and I intend to touch on uh, some burning issues in the church um, because we are beginning a new year for our consideration. The Feast of Mary, Mother of God, is a very appropriate way to begin a new year, reminding us to rely on powerful intercession of our Heavenly Mother. Photographers, you are intimidating me. Please, go and sit down and hear the word of God at least for once. Eh? Hear the word of God too. So, the beginning, the first reading from Numbers, it's a beautiful um, passage of the kind of blessing we must give at the beginning of each year. Okay, the Jews, they don't joke with this. We bless one another. Parents bless children, children bless their parents. And some of the parishes did that uh, yesterday in the morning uh, when we celebrated Holy Family. In, in, in the responsorial psalm, also, the psalm asks for God's blessings. We beg God for blessings. So the first reading and the responsorial psalm go together talking about blessings. Then in the second reading, Paul's letter to the Galatians, this is what he says. God's son has become one of us through Mary, Mary's fiat, Mary's fiat. In fact, the love of God mediated through what we are calling the incarnation. We, we don't see it well. We don't see it well, but we live it all the time. I was, I was telling some friends, when I was a deacon, I was brought to the cathedral for, for uh, pastors. And at the cathedral, a deacon in any of the smaller parishes, you are somebody. But a deacon at the cathedral, you are nobody. So, sometimes people are coming for wedding, and then Monsignor Pegu asked me, Reverend, go and help them. When I go there, they are ordering me like some small boy. Arrange chairs, do this, do this. I said, these people, one day I'll become a priest, they will see. <laughs> then I became a priest, and I became a bezer. Seven years of priesthood. One Saturday morning, I've gone to the cathedral. Um, Monsignor Agbenu wanted to get host. So once I got to the office, I was doing some work. I've just started learning the computer. It was not easy to input data. I came out. Somebody called me. Excuse me. Say, can you help us? Out of humility, <laughs> I went closer to them. They were packing chairs for wedding. We kept packing the chairs, and I was praying for somebody who knows me to come by to call me Father Keke. <laughs> because, and then one woman walked to me and said, Abre. <laughs> no, they were, the boys were taking three or four. I was taking two. Then I said, yes. He said, <laughs> Do the work, and we'll give you something later. <laughs> After packing chairs for some time. Then one of our sisters passed by. They say, hey, Father, what are you doing? <laughs> I say, yes, I'm helping. <laughs> then one of them said, are you a priest? I said, what do you see? The sister said, this is our beza. Hey! Yamana, <laughs> you papa. When I was going, I said, you people, I miss the days of the tonsha, okay? The tonsha, now we don't have it. The tonsha, whether you are in castle or not, once somebody sees you with some motorway on the, in the middle of your head, they know you are a priest. I wish now to have some pee on our forehead. Since we are tattooing, then here you are. But, dear people of God, 
When somebody insults you and say you're an animal, we don't like it. We get so angry. It's one of the biggest insults in all the languages to refer to somebody kolo, abua. But let's look at something. We are homo sapiens. We are supposed to be what? Animals. They call, they call us higher primates. Okay? In fact, when you see a very angry human, human being, sometimes <laughs> we are like them. People are angry as you are accident to cool down. They are not. One of our priests was crossed by a taxi driver in the, in the middle center of town, KJT. He came out in his castle and was dragging the taxi driver. He said, Father! Who is your father? I said, your father, I'm going to hold your head. My child will say, be your father. You know, we look like them. We are so close to animals. We are. And so the distance between God and us and the distance between us and animals, you can imagine. So that if you refer to me as an animal, <laughs> except when you are giving a human being something, anything you say in the citation, they like it. You are the best animal we have. Come for your award. We'll go for it. But if God should come down, he descended deeper than us to become us and not just us but to die a shameful death even within us the Lord made him go through the death of a criminal then you and I will appreciate the love of God I was just asked to purchase I'm a young man to purchase because I'm a priest <laughs> it is paining me that I'm packing chairs I'm sure if I say oh father Help us to pack chairs. You like it. But if they, you are packing the chairs and they think you are not anybody, you carry more chairs. What are you doing? <laughs> they, you feel they are dehumanizing you. So, in short, my dear brothers and sisters, this love of God is so deep. That's why we must appreciate it. He became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Even though he was God, he did not count equality with God, a thing to be grasped. Some people are friends of priests. Father Kese is my friend. Father Natu is my friend. So in Christ the King, you are a champion. Some people I never knew. They are going about telling people, Bishop Asari, or you me body body. What, what? <laughs> because those who know me, they know the type of body bodies I have. <laughs> but they are all over the place. Even though he was God, he did not boast with that. My dear people of God, and so when we honor Mary, there are people, even Catholics among us, who say it's a difficult teaching. So the progressive Catholics say, I'm a Catholic, but this Marian staff, I'm a, <laughs> you may not have a mother, that is why. When my mother was alive a few times when she was not well, I rushed home. Because it's difficult these days to get people who care, carers. I think we are getting to a point where we need to have an institution for caring people. Because if you give your mother or your parent to anybody to care for the person, remember, they are meeting the people as some old people. What are we doing? What is the fuss about these old people? But you knew them as prim and proper people. Your father kept himself well. Your mother kept herself well. An old trade teacher. And now she's old. She cannot clean herself. And somebody else comes and says, hey, how about this, Susunyi? You are making everything. So it takes a relative. It takes somebody who knew these people when they were not old to take care of them. It's very difficult. So once in a while I go. And then when we have meetings, I just leave and go. And at meetings, people say, at this father side, or your mama about to do. At one meeting, they took me on. I said, yes, some of you, you have parents. You don't have mothers. When you have a mother or a father, then you know how to respond to them. Somebody put something on the page, and I felt so bad. It says, a mother can take care of over seven, eight, nine, ten children. But ten children can never take care of a mother 
or a parent. When you are more in the family, <laughs> you rather have difficulty and challenges. Yet a mother will take care of so many children, and yet just few cannot take care of her. And so when it comes to mother, mother, the problem we have is that we are deciding who to choose as mother for Jesus. If you meet me, I say, this is my mother. It is not your business. Sometimes some people say, this is your mother, this is your mother. How many mothers do you have? Is it your business? I live with a, a European priest, and anytime somebody calls the parish, his father sat around and said, no, uh, tell father, the mother from Kokumimri, the mother from here, the, the father said, hey, babe, father, sorry. How many mothers do you have? <laughs> I said, I don't even know the number. There are many. With time, I made him see why we call some people mother. We were having a discussion among priests, and one priest said, something we are doing to parishioners, which is so wrong, is that some, parish, uh, some priests have been calling parishioners my mother, my father, my mother, my father, and because of that, parishioners are feeling good. But once you're a priest, you are the father. How can father, I can say, call you father. And we're arguing about this. I was sad. So Bishop asked some years back, he says, I said, why? I said, if anybody should hear this argument here, it's a disgrace to us. Those people talking, they are talking by heart because they don't have mothers. If you address an elderly person, my mother, my father, it's out of respect. It's out of respect. And in fact, they are the true mothers and fathers. We are collection fathers, collection parents. Because some people don't have respect for themselves, they feel offended when they see somebody in high authority bowing to other people. You will recall that when Abishop Kofi was installed at the cathedral, we went, we genuflected, we, we call it obediencia, those of us working in Accra. When any of the elderly priests got to him, he stood up. He embraced them. He didn't allow them to kneel. A priest was ordained in Zaire, and their culture, the mother and father will have to crawl a certain distance and come as, to honor the son. This young man said, no. It is this group, this man and woman who made me who I am now. They did more than the seminary. And so he rather walked to them. He changed the narrative. My dear friends, all I'm saying is, Mary was chosen by God, not by us. So who dare any of us to say, I don't want it? It is your business. God chose her. You are full of grace. And you are going to do this for me. And that's all. When our names were mentioned, people were calling and saying, Hey, Father, how? How did it happen? What happened? You? All kinds of things. I said, Yeah, I may not be your choice, but that is the choice of God. A pampo. Wow, Sema. God rides straight with crooked lines. Crooked lines. Somebody came to you, Father. So, which languages do you speak? Even people were not aware I went outside to study. I said, Father, sorry. That's how it, it, it happens. So, beloved in Christ, if you choose to respect God's choice, it's a blessing for you. If you choose to fight God's choice, voila. <laughs> it is your business. I will propose to you, especially with the grotto in your parish, once you have a grotto there, you must be committed to going there to pray. It's not supposed to be one of your buildings for tourism. Oh, we have grotto here, we have adoration chapel. Use them so that it becomes beneficial to you and family. And so we honor Mary because we need her. We need her. Again, about Mary's intercession. We don't go to Mary just because Mary is powerful. No. Mary is just a mediator of graces. She begs the Son. She begs God. 
to come to her aid, like she did in the wedding in Cana. But when we say she's mediatrix, I want us to look at our own life. Sometimes you have offended, some, you have done something wrong at home. If you look at the face of your father, you don't even want to go home. So we normally go through our mothers. And when you have done something wrong and you tell your mother the truth, you say, cool down. I will handle your father. She knows best. I've been given an example of a few times my mother would ask us to go and wake my father. It was a tall order because we didn't know how to do it. You go and stand by the man and you'll be hitting him. When he wakes up, you will land some slap. He will hit you. So we're, we're having problems. The one day I told my mother, we don't like waking this man. They said, how do you do it? He said, come. When you go, go to his leg and be rubbing your, your fingers at the sole of his feet. The first time I did it, the man opened his eyes nicely, slowly, slowly, and was smiling. He said, mothers know how. <laughs> we will we'll go and be shaking him like this. So those of you who have been coming to church and be shaking yourself, shouting, calling God, go to Mary. She will show you how to gently, prayerfully attract the attention of God. It's not how, how much you shout. The multiplication of words. Some people are just after mass, they are rushing to the altar as if God is only here. God is more there than here. Sit wherever you are and communicate. And if you are having a difficulty, just repeat the Hail Mary to yourself. Go to Mary, and she will teach you gentle but sure way of attracting the attention of God. And so, hold on to that. Beloved in Christ, the two things I mentioned that I want to touch. One, they are saying our, our numbers are dwindling. It started with, oh, the youth are not coming to church. The youth, the youth every generation, have been difficult. Your time, your parents complain. Our time, our parents complain. We are also complaining now of the other generation. Every generation comes with its own problems. We are not going to church. But is it true that our numbers are dwindling? I don't think so. We are only becoming less committed in church. When it suits us, then we are Catholics. For instance, the modern Catholics, they'll come to you and say, Father, I want to name my child, and you can add baptism to it. I said, why don't you do the naming customary? He said, no, I don't like this, like this sheen and things, you know, me, I don't like, can we just put the two together? But when it comes to customary marriage, they forget all that is modernity. A.D. or a custom. Wokusuni. Some are even asking for laptop. Which of our gods? knows how to use mobile phone, let alone computer. And then you look at your face, you've gone to a village, and look at your face, and say, hey, insano, you're pa abrochido. <laughs> abrochido. Then they want cloth. <laughs> if you want to do traditional marriage, we go to what? Apetitian things. Grey bath for cloth, not Holland. But when it comes to that, so I tell people when they bring their daughters, baby girls. I said, if you are asking me to do the naming and the baptism, I'll continue to the customary marriage too. Say, Father, is it by force? Say, yes, it's by force. Then that one, I also ask for just rosary and hymn book. <laughs> rosary for the mother, hymn book for the father. This is how we behave as Catholics. When it suits us, <coughs> we are not Catholics. When it suits us, we are Catholics. <coughs> Somebody dies, they'll come to you and say, Oh, Father, our mother comes to church. You. She's one of the foundation members. Just as she got sick. <clears throat> when a Catholic gets sick, you tell your priest. And your priest will get to know because they go for communion rounds. But they go and hide their mother. They go through all kinds of churches. And some churches, they like your collection. They don't like your dead body. They don't accept their bodies in their church. Then they come back and say, Father, this our mother is baptized. You see the card, it's like, hmm. She was baptized at a gold coaster. So that is one group of Catholics. We choose and pick what to do. It is just about commitment. 
and the commitment, we blame ourselves, we as priests and you also. Sometimes we make church activities more social than spiritual. They tell you if the thing is very social, then people will come. It's not about people who will come. It's about the committed people who will come. Okay. Finally, another burning thing, this blessing of same-sex marriages. It's so sad that even priests and bishops are making it look like it's a fight between Europe and Africa. It's not true. The gay thing was imposed on us, and so suddenly the church became very resistant. And so, the, you know, when you hear of something, you are so angry. And when you take decisions out of anger, we make mistakes. So the gay people went to one extreme. The church also went to one extreme. See, don't even allow them around our places. You go to some churches, they are preaching gays are not allowed. Then the Pope is saying, please, no. When it comes to God's blessings, we can't choose who to bless. We are blessed Muslims, all kinds of people. If you attend a customary marriage, and it's a father, your prayer, and you bless them, it is not sacramentalized because I've blessed them. To go through the sacrament, something must be done. These are young people, I've, been, I've just been told, they've been prepared, and then we'll be having a ceremony to say that you are confirmed. You are confirmed. And this is becoming a problem. And this is where I, I want us to see how <clears throat> the pretense we have. The pretense. I said something in Tema, and now when you talk, it's on social media. So this friend of my priest wrote back to me and said, I'm sorry, you are speaking like a prelate. I am speaking like a theologian. And what did I say? I said, it is simply this, that God hates sin. He hates sin, but loves the sinner. So we are sinners, he loves us, but he hates what we do. He will not throw the water and the baby, no. Dirty water, yes, but there's a baby inside there. And so all he's telling us is, the Pope started even very early. He says, please, what is our pastoral response to these deviants, people who are into this life? Let's change it. Don't name it. Don't say gay marriage or... What is our pastoral response to sinners? If Christ appeared this morning and he stood there and says, Today, I want those without sin to enter the church. Before Father Kessel will realize this thing is gone, my staff is gone, I'm gone. <laughs> I tell him I have run in stomach. If God should stand here to say that, Lord, communion time, we stand here and say, The body of Christ. And yeah, Bonnie Aji. <laughs> we'll do this and go. They, they, they normally say the church is full of saints and sinners. No, the church is full of sinners. Finish. It's God who decides who's a saint. Because the Bible says our righteousness are even filthy rags. Beloved. So this is my response to my brother priest. He left Ghana because of a problem. And grace has found him in the U.S. He's forgotten that. So I just reminded him, I said, Father, I thought it is by God's grace that you and I are still priests. Have you forgotten it? Be careful. You become like those elders who wanted to stone the prostitute, and yet they were customers of the prostitute. In Tema, I was in a parish, and in the evening, some of our ladies who come and stand in front of our church, and people, the men, surprisingly the men, came to me as a father, do something. So we added more lights. And the more lights we brought, the more they came with shining dresses. And I was getting tired. And the men would not stop. Parish council will be on my neck, father, do something. It's, it's a disgrace for our church. Why? One Sunday, I think Holy Family, I stood in church like this and I said, Beloved in Christ, I've noticed that house flies, they go where they are attracted, isn't it? Sometimes when you spray yourself, sometimes when you are eating mangoes and all that. I think that there's the Anglican Church, there's the Joint Church, there's the Catholic Church, there's the uh, Pentecostal Church. If they are standing here, then their customers are here. 
So I beg you in the name of God, customers, when you stop patronizing, <laughs> economics says, when there are no demand, no matter what you supply, when there's no demand, business will go down. And so, when I did that, after two weeks, business went down to the glory of God. You see how we sinners have a way of treating other sinners. In, 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 in our life, the sinner is the one who has been caught. But for the Christian, the sinner is anyone who has sinned, whether you have been caught or not. Be careful the way we are treating this uh, uh, same-sex issue. It is as good as any other thing which is uh, deviant behavior. Don't think some are higher than others at all. I would prefer that we treat them with pastoral care, especially when it comes close to home, come close to your family. Some of them are victims. When you hear that somebody has stolen money, one million and all that, say, hey, they will finish the country. You are in a society, and some 50 cities cannot be found. 50 cities. <laughs> you are not a saint. You are not honest. Because money doesn't pass through your hands. Wait till money starts passing through your hands. You are a treasure. Then you begin to test your own spirituality. When money is not passing through your hands, no. Some people ask me to change those who count money in the church because they are suspicious of them. There were eight. Six of them were young ladies. And when they are counting money, you know that they are laughing and laughing. So when people are passing, Father and Grofi, the way they are laughing, I mean, Fenoko. I investigated and I realized they all had jobs and they were chosen by the priest before me because they are bankers. And they bring all kinds of things, professionalism to the counting of money. They bring forms from their banks so that we can indicate how much and things were going on well. Then I asked who will replace them. Then a man told me, Father, I have five men waiting. <laughs> no woman, five men. They are all pensioners. <laughs> then I said, those who are receiving salary and those who are not receiving salary. <laughs> Logically, who will be more tempted? You know, the one city and the five city and the two city know the way they are squeezed, they are not attractive. But the 200 and the 100, they are smooth. <laughs> when you see them, they feel like beckoning you. When I say that, they say, Father, we are senior people and we know how to do it. We know how to do it. With time, within two weeks, one of them was brought to me. He's supposed to account for some 200 CDs he collected and he has not paid for it. And then they said, it's taking about six months. I said, Daddy, they gave you 200 and you can't account for it. Then if I give you all the collection too, you take them away. He says, Father, even me, I've decided not to join. But let me tell you, the other two are worse. <laughs> are worse. My dear friends in Christ, when a thief is caught, tell God, God, I thank you that I wasn't the one. I have changed. But don't go and pontificate and make yourself a saint because you have not been caught. Who makes the church dirty? Gay marriages or sin? Let us be like our mother Mary. I'll propose some, something for us to do this new year. Quickly. My dear friends, my proposal is this. As we begin the new year, let's wake up every day with a noble thing to dream of. Something noble to do. Some good to do and someone to love. And let the first person be Jesus. Amen.